it's so nice meeting Hi, you. <laughs> Good to see you. Um, so I think we've not met before, so maybe let me introduce myself. Um, as I said, I'm Clara. Okay. I joined Bayer in 2018, late 2018, so almost five years ago, actually, with the dual study program in Berlin in business informatics. And during that time, we always had three months of working at Bayer and three months of university full time. So that meant that I already got to experience various different departments within pharma. And uh, in 2021, I finished my studies and now I'm in global marketing with one of our recently launched brands. Uh, and I'm also doing my master's studies um, next to the job. Yeah. And once I'm not occupied with these, I really enjoy baking and also creating art. And what about you? Yeah, so oh, that, that sounds pretty cool. I think I, <laughs> we have uh, some topics to talk about. I can already see some, some overlaps. So yeah, I'm Sven. Uh, I would consider myself an early millennial. <laughs> so um, and uh, born in Saarland, Germany. And after an apprenticeship in banking, mm -hmm. uh, I left my beautiful home state uh, to study media management. Um, uh, thesis was on uh, innovation management. And then I joined Bayer as an intern uh, in 2005, oh. which, which is, I think, has been uh, uh, 18 years ago, 17 years ago, I don't know. Uh, so a long time ago. but. Um, yeah, the fascination actually never ceased. And uh, yeah, it started in, in communications and uh, yeah, several roles uh, in uh, brand management, communication management. And since uh, 2020, I have been head of global brand management uh, for the Global Bayer brand. Oh. So um, yeah, that's... Uh, cool, uh, um, val val very valuable asset, but there is much more growth potential that we can unleash. So we are working on unleashing this, this potential. And um, yeah, so happy to discuss a little bit deeper. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> But you said that you're the global head of the buyer brand now. That sounds really mm -hmm. interesting, I have to say. So what does that, um, what's like your, the scope of your role? Yeah, so uh, we have um, actually four areas. Uh, it's the topic strategy and uh, identity. So what does the brand stand for? Uh, what is our positioning, purpose, vision and so on? Uh, and also how does it look like? What does, what, how does the Bayer brand speak? So really the full brand identity in rooms, uh, sonic uh, identity, uh, visual identity, corporate design. Um, it's also about understanding uh, measurement and metrics. I think that also plays a big role in your field, I guess, uh, looking yeah. at data and uh, insights and um, using it to craft the strategy and to, to optimize it uh, on the way. And it is about brand experience and brand communication. So we have a lot to tell to the world. Uh, we have a fascinating purpose and vision. And uh, it's our role also to um, create the framework to uh, to communicate uh, all this uh, fantastic stuff uh, to our different audiences um, yeah so uh, overall i would consider the brand as an asset yeah. uh, it's it's an ten, ten, uh, intangible asset so it's not comparable with a machine or computer so we, we see a big business impact when uh, the bayer brand is involved and it's about you know how can we as a company um, actually yeah leverage this potential and that's that's currently driving us. Mm, I can yeah. imagine this is really interesting. I mean, as you said, the buyer brand itself has a very big heritage. I can imagine, especially in Germany, maybe, and also with the Aspirin brand. Mm -hmm. um, I think this is linked to buyer as um, spring to summer, I would say. <laughs> so yeah. it's essentially so linked it, with one another. You know, f to me, uh, as uh, you are part of a younger generation, uh, I would be very interested in, you know, what are your associations when you think about uh, the Bayer brand? What what brought you to Bayer, actually, which uh, is always the most interesting question to <laughs> me, because obviously you also perceive the brand and you have some associations with it. Yeah. So uh, so uh, what what 
what kind of caught you actually or your attention? I think uh, it's a really great question because I think for me it's a really it's a really interesting way. I always wanted to be an astrophysicist actually, so that has nothing to do with <sighs> either healthcare or life sciences, but it has the mm. link of science itself. And then at at some point I discovered that maybe physics is not my biggest strength, so I rather only look into the stars out of like a hobby. And so I was uh, searching after uh, finishing school, I was searching for something and um, that I can study afterwards. And I applied for, it's like um, applied informatics and business sciences mm -hmm. um, at the TU Berlin. And actually my parents, they said, oh no, Clara, you need to have a plan B. You cannot only apply for one thing. And so I did a little, mm -hmm. uh, I did a little bit of research um, on the internet actually, and I couldn't decide whether to pursue a business focused uh, bachelor studies or rather a science focused bachelor mm -hmm. studies. And actually that's the point where I kind of stumbled across this dual study program by Bayer. And for me, it made like click in my head because actually that was the perfect combination of business and science for me. And so I applied for uh, the business informatics um, dual studies. And um, I also got accepted, which is I think One of the greatest upsides for me was that I already had another studies which I could pursue. And so I was really relaxed and just very curious in the application process. And um, yeah, so I was very happy then in the end that I got selected as one of the happy uh, students who got the opportunity to do their dual studies with Bayer. And that's kind of how I ended up with the company. Um, and I have to say, I also I'm still quite happy with it because for me, it's still is a perfect combination of doing maybe like in your daily work you do more of a business work but you still have that very very strong link to science mm -hmm. and also to like medicine especially since i'm in pharma and um, so that's really really interesting for me and um, in the end i'm very happy that i pursued my plan b and not the plan a <laughs> <laughs> But I, I mean, so that was really a very uh, unique combination, obviously, and a great uh, offering that that we, that we made. Yeah, uh, um, and uh, I, I really find it in that interesting because I, I'm always interested in these kind of overlapping fields because you know you are like uh, the spider in the in the net somehow, you know, trying to bring two worlds together. Because only then, you know, you can you can also uh, I think have a have a successful business in the end. Uh, I mean, there's the innovation part but there's also the business administration the marketing part so bringing these two worlds together is probably pretty um, uh, challenging at times when you talk with pure marketers or pure scientists I guess uh, they are just living in, in two different worlds I, I, I feel how, how, how do you bring them together yeah actually it's uh, it's quite funny because you definitely do see differences in the teams from, for example, marketing or, or our medical teams. And since we manage a, well, it's a pharmaceutical product, so it's a science product per se. And so our, also our medical teams have a very, very strong say, of course, in like product communication and so on. But we also, I gotta say that we have very, very diverse teams, which I think is also crucial, as you said, for the success of any brand, be it a healthcare brand, be it a Uh, like consumer product i think it's all uh, about the diversity so actually also within the marketing teams we do have a lot of scientists and we also do have a lot of like trained doctors and so on and um, who are also very i think vital um also what they bring to the table but then of course the business focused people who have rather like the numbers in mind and all of the excellence frameworks and so on they they are crucial as well and i think in the past few years we have established quite a good working relationship of appreciating one another's like um, core competencies and then maybe also I'd say giving for example if not if I have a medical colleague and I just know that they're a medical colleague they have a medical background they might just be better at a certain task than I am because for example it's very sci science focused And I think we have a, um, kind of achieved a sense of collaboration in the teams that we also assign tasks or projects to the people who are most fit for them. And I think this is also 
very important if you mm. like yeah if you work in such a high specialty field where no one can know it all of course Mm -hmm. um, yeah wow yeah. so i think you, you are you are bringing people together so i think that's a very crucial co core competency of the future because mm -hmm. you have lots of disciplines lots of stakeholder interests and different perspectives but bringing them together to create this one product that's a pretty exciting uh place to to work at i guess it's very similar also to mine yeah because uh you know also you know what i studied media management at the time was very interesting to me because it included these kind of creative parts production and um kind of creating a uh, a creative product uh, on the one side but it also included some tech technology technical stuff but at, uh, you know ultimately also of course the administration part the project management part so you know soft skills you know how How can you how can you lead creative teams? Uh, it's also you know you take a little different approach there, and uh, it's very similar to what what we are doing here in our team, uh, because working with external partners, of mm. course, lots of creative people, but also it has to work. So feasibility plays a big role, um, and um, yeah. Uh, lots of stakeholders obviously uh, at several levels um, it's always about you know combining combining all the worlds uh, and create one combined product there yeah so i think that's that's a cool field uh, yeah wow it is and also i i gotta say every time i talk to people outside of my i'd say usual range of colleagues that i interact with mm. every time i'm super fascinated by how broad the bayer world is mm -hmm. especially also if you mm -hmm. look at our three or even four different um mm -hmm. yeah different company areas it's really it's really fascinating uh, fascinating how diverse all of the divisions are for example i think you are probably in uh, more of the enabling functions part mm -hmm. of the company uh, than exactly. i'm um, in pharma, but we yeah. of course also have our consumer health business or the crop science business. Right. And so it's just such a variety of topics that we also need to tackle, which in the end all are under the buyer brand, right? <laughs> exactly. That's, that's exactly, uh, that's exactly the point, you know, this is the unifying, uh, the unifier actually bringing all to all of all parts of the company together under this umbrella. And, you know, for us, it's important that the Bayer brand creates value for each division mm -hmm. uh, and each division has different requirements, obviously, different target audiences also. And um, that also needs to be reflected in this overarching story. So uh, so our our challenge is actually to bring all the pieces together to make sure, you know, our work is contributing to the success of all businesses in the end. Um, but also understanding what they are doing and uh, of course it's different um, and uh, but overall I think what combines us is the science uh, yeah. as our superpower I mean uh, life science is a very unique field combining these these two areas the most essential topics uh, health and nutrition under the roof of Bayer as a life science company investing billions per year in in science in research and development this is pretty unique what i think is a big part um also to maybe the buyer brand itself especially in germany is buyer as one of the top employers of the company um i don't know how you experience that but actually i think that um there's not many other places where you can be at where you're like um, developed and valued so highly by your employer. So I'm also really grateful to being part of this like team buyer, as you say. <laughs> mm -hmm. Team buyer, absolutely. So I, I was always uh, fascin fascinated uh, by actually what we are doing. So also the positive impact that this company uh, makes or can make, um, which is very unique. And that was always something that uh, that kept me also here. So uh, I think this fascination uh, for the purpose and also um yeah for um for 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 the contributions we we can we can bring to to people and the world uh, and the other thing is of course the development part absolutely mm -hmm. so um i think i couldn't have 
uh, stayed here so long if uh, I would uh, still do the same stuff uh, like uh, 17 years ago or so. So I think there was never a w one single dull year, I have to say, you know, it was always, um, there was always a challenge on the table. And when the challenge was uh, solved or delivered, uh, there was the next challenge coming. So, um, and this is something, you know, that really kept, uh, kept me also growing, mm -hmm. uh, which I appreciate a lot. Uh, because that's really something to be grateful of. It's really not like, uh, you know, here's your role and, you know, that's what you are doing for the next 40 years or so. So it's really like basically yeah. every year is different. And, um, uh, and that's very fascinating when you work for such a big company. Um, never gets boring. And since we have m lots of challenges uh, always, uh, there are lots of places you can, uh, you can work um, when, you are, when you're up for it. Mm -hmm. I would be really interested in knowing whether you kind of the challenges the challenges found you or you found the challenges because I think that's uh -huh. one main reason where people um, who are very early in their career might struggle with do I need mm. to be very proactive and search for all of the challenges that I could maybe tackle or will they eventually also maybe reach me if I have if I stay with an open mind and if I just like keep my eyes and ears open for everything to mm. come. Mm. Yeah, find these sweet spots where there is a demand, where you have a passion and also a competence, mm. but also, you know, um, a signal that you are up for it. Yeah, yeah, I totally see that. And I would even say that I think there's like a saying in Germany, kind of von nichts kommt nichts. So like translating mm. into English, that would be if you do nothing, nothing will change and nothing will happen. Mm -hmm. And maybe yeah. this is also like holds very true for any career development. Mm. Um, yeah. yeah. But yeah. When, when you started mm -hmm. at Bayer, did you always have a clear path in mind or did you did you like when you started, did you have like a five year or a 10 year plan or were you just <laughs> starting with, I don't yeah. know where I'm going to be in the I, I have to say, uh, when this question arises, I'm, I, I always feel overwhelmed <laughs> because uh, it's so difficult to answer. The world is spinning fast and who knows yeah. what I want to do in five or ten years. It's, for me, it's difficult to, uh, to explain. And as I, as I said, I actually wanted to produce big TV shows. That was actually oh, really? the passion that... That was actually the passion that uh, that kind of drove me to this studies of, uh, of media management. Mm -hmm. And only by... by kind of accident somehow I found this uh, interesting opening for this internship and then I realized oh it can also be interesting uh, at a company uh, uh, and then I started actually as an events manager mm -hmm. uh, so a ma project manager for events for corporate events so organizing press conferences the annual general meeting yeah. uh, and then uh, you know there was a the anniversary 150 years mm -hmm. uh, of bear 2013 which is a big thing of course if a company celebrates such a uh, anniversary so it took some some years to prepare for it and i actually you know because i was passionate about this kind of stuff uh, i i created a plan proactively somehow mm -hmm. so i, I so somehow took over the lead before other people actually thought about it and um, and that brought me in a leading position, and then we really did fantastic stuff uh, during this year. Big pictures. I still have. I still find people, you know, who have these big posters. Maybe you have seen it in the stadium. One oh, yeah. thirty thousand, thirty thousand people forming the Bayer Cross at the time. Um, just an example. So uh, what I wanted to say is kind of, you know, by this, and then you know. We already somehow touched the field of brand, of branding, of building a brand, uh, brand activation mm -hmm. somehow, brand experience. And that uh, then at some point I felt like I cannot do that forever because it will be, it will burn me out. You know, you cannot do this part kind of job for, for 30 years. And then, you know, I wanted to broaden my, my network get maybe on a more global scope um, strategic more strategically and then uh, somehow I could join this global brand team um, and then kind of the journey continued uh, so what I also want to say is like you know you can see there is 
somehow everything builds on each mm -hmm. other but you cannot clearly see what's happening i could have never imagined that i could have this role at at one point that was above my imagination at the time yeah. when i started here yeah. one step at a time exactly yeah <laughs> i think that's probably very um, challenging also for you uh more at the beginning of of your career uh, so how how are you managing this because i i know there is a lot of anxiety anxiety maybe or you know questioning i'm am i at the right place here mm -hmm. so how, how 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 are you dealing with that uh, you know you hear you know from your peers from your uh, friends what they are doing yeah so um when i when i finished my bachelor studies you always have like you have to think about where do i want to go do i want to stay with Bayer? Do I want to do maybe a full-time master's studies? Do I want to do my studies besides work? Where do I want to work? Do I want to stay in Berlin? There's just so many questions. And um, I was very, very lucky to, um, yeah, during my studies, I already was for three months in the team that I'm now also in. And the team welcomed me so uh, wholeheartedly. And also the challenge, as you said, launching a new product mm -hmm. in the cardiovascular area mm -hmm. is also a very, very big one. And also it's a challenge that you don't encounter so often for um, brands uh, in the pharmaceutical space, because since I'm sure you know, it's very, very um, yeah, expensive and also mm -hmm. um, very challenging to kind of develop a new pharmaceutical product. And you can be very lucky if you have something that then also surpasses all of the trials, shows um, the efficacy data that is needed for the patients and also shows the safety data that is needed for the patients. So I I, I knew right when I uh, joined the team that I want to come back to the team. And so I was very lucky that um, they also had capacity for me joining mm -hmm. back and they were very happy that they also wanted to come back. <laughs> Okay, so now it's time for our halftime break. So I would be oh, really wow. interested. <laughs> <laughs> I'd be really interested in knowing whether you have any maybe lunchtime routine also that maybe emerged during COVID. Mm -hmm. And is there any mm -hmm. specific activity that you do to kind of reset your brain and refresh your mind? Yeah, so uh, I think first of all, it's important that you have a lunch break. Uh, so uh, what I make sure is that I have a lunch break blocker on my calendar because otherwise it quickly gets occupied by a yeah. meeting invite. <laughs> so I think that's the first pl uh, part. And then the second part, I definitely need to eat something. So uh, it should be fresh, it should be healthy and um, not too heavy. Uh, so when I'm here in the office, I, I go to the canteen. Uh, uh, cafeteria so our colleagues are doing a great job over there really offering mm -hmm. fantastic choices really m contemporary I would say when I'm working from home twice a week usually um, I try to find something healthy in my Cologne neighborhood which usually works uh, I, I also like to build in some movement so uh, even if it's only a quick uh, a short walk uh, it's definitely important to change uh, sceneries to get your kind of body a little bit uh, kind of um, uh, in, in, a, in, a, in a moving state um, and uh, that is also important depending on my mood um, uh, you know sometimes I also like uh, just uh, eating you know, in a calm corner just for myself. Uh, sometimes I need to socialize and then we go with the full team once a week or maybe with one or two colleagues. So it's really different. Uh, I don't have a, a routine there. So how about you? Uh, I hope you also have a lunchtime blocker on your calendar. <laughs> yeah, actually I do. Um, yeah. And I also try to keep that free. I, I got to admit it's not always successful, um, but most mm. of the time it is. And I, I don't really have a, like a lunchtime routine, but I think in the Berlin offices, especially pre-COVID, we had a really nice lunchtime culture. So you would go every day to lunch with another colleague. And usually mm -hmm. people would have like their calendars blocked for two months in advance for all of the lunchtime breaks. And um, I think during COVID that kind of faded out since everyone was in home office, of course. Mm -hmm. And now it's starting to get back in. And I really enjoy that because it's also times that you do not necessarily talk about work. Mm -hmm. And I think that's also really 
needed to stay in close contact uh, with your colleagues. Mm -hmm. And um, other than that, I said, if I really need to refresh or clear my mind, I, I draw um, or I play my mm -hmm. piano. And it's also mm -hmm. very rela relaxing and lets you um, yeah, wander your mind to different places um, other than Bayern. I think that's also uh, essential um, in oh, the That's end. cool. So are you doing that doing, doing breaks when you work from home? Yeah, well, actually, I don't really draw during breaks because mm. that takes up more time. Um, but, mm. uh, for example, on the weekends uh, when I don't have uh, my university classes, um, mm. I do enjoy that a lot. And I also do that, like, most of the time, not for myself, but for, like, friends um, or, like, mm. birthdays. I really like doing birthday cards um, with uh, aquarelle. Um, colors um, and so yeah I, I, I do that I'm, I'd say I'm a very creative person which uh, probably mm -hmm. I'm also um, I, I can feed a lot of that into my daily work in marketing being a very creative person but I'm sure you you are also a very creative person when working on yeah. the buyer brand right <laughs> so uh, I yes I, I definitely have a creative streak as well um, and sometimes I feel like I have to to nurture it a little bit mm -hmm. more because of course day-to-day -day business you uh, can be very one-sided and I, I really love how you keep this other part of the brain kind of active mm -hmm. uh, so I can I can really uh, uh, recommend that to to everyone um, so what I what I really find interesting is um, you know there is another part which is doing sports uh, a few times a week which is important to me to kind of clear my 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 head which which I need like going going for a run uh, you know along the Rhine River or strength training which is just important for me to keep sane somehow mm -hmm. But it has also kind of a performative um, uh, kind of uh, part if you are doing sports. And I've just uh, discovered a new part, which I find interesting, which is about mindfulness. Mm -hmm. And I think when you draw, for example, or when you are playing a, uh, an instrument, you are really living the moment, right? You, you are just in this moment. You cannot think about tomorrow or last year or next week or the big presentation. And... Uh, so I'm just coming from a, an interesting uh, training last week, uh, which was on emotional intelligence. Oh, nice. And uh, that started with mindfulness exercises. Uh, so I've just started uh, with uh, really very early in the journey, but 10-minute uh, meditations, just breathing and uh, yeah, grabbing, grabbing the attention of the moment mm -hmm. and feeling, feeling your body getting, getting con contact to, to yourself again. Because sometimes, you know, when you rush from one meeting to one meeting, you notice also in marketing, I guess you have back-to-back -back meetings, presentations, you're constantly communicating. So your brain and then going to the restroom, looking, you know, what's, what's going on on your cell phone, WhatsApp. So it's getting too much, you know, I think our brains are somehow getting overwhelmed. I, mm. They are not made for this kind of uh, pace. So I found this really eye-opening to get introduced into this new field. Um, and I came back with the feeling this is a topic that probably needs more attention. And I want to also to bring this to my team now because I feel um, this is something we can all benefit from. Sounds like a very great training last week. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that also keep, that also belongs to the topic of keep growing. Yeah, um, because there is always a new element or dimension you know you can discover. Um, the worst uh, uh, situation that could happen to me would be like uh, if I would just uh, continue, just stop, st st stop uh, growing and and developing and just you know getting getting uh, routine in everything i think then it would get quickly very boring yeah i totally agree i totally agree and is there yeah. any other measures that you take on to kind of promote your lifelong learning journey also mm -hmm. yeah what, what i really uh, find interesting is that we are kind of uh, also being forced a little bit mm -hmm. to think about it all the time with our development dialogue, which is a, which is a tool uh, that every employee uh, should uh, keep, uh, keep, keep doing uh, with their managers. Uh, so you are kind of, it's a, it's, I think it's scheduled every second quarter that mm -hmm. you have a dialogue on, you know, what's, 
uh, you know what what are your your strengths what are your areas you can you still work on and then also crafting a plan how to how to uh, address the, uh, kind of also your development needs or wishes um, and my conclusion would always be um, learning by doing uh, I think the trainings and seminars and everything is very important as, as an impulse as an inspiration but I really believe in in just uh, getting the next mandate doing the next project focusing on something in your work um, I I feel like that's the way I grow um, yeah how, how, how do you assess this no I totally agree I totally agree that's also actually why I've decided to do my master's next to a full-time job at Bayer because mm. I was just like I, I do want to have a master's degree I do want to do my like master's degree also to um, open several doors that you might need in career mm. development um, but also I didn't want to like stop working because it's a lot of fun to me and I do realize for myself that I learn best when doing stuff so this is exactly mm. this learning by doing um, and so I kind of uh, compromised a bit of my leisure time <laughs> to then um, do my master's degree besides um, work um, so yeah. yeah that's it but so far I've I'm almost finished. I uh, gotta do my master thesis still. Um, I think I'm gonna tackle mm -hmm. this um, this year. Um, but so far it's been also really great. Also like at university, talking to other students who also all um, all do the their masters besides work. And so you get a lot of different perspectives for several topics. And so I think that's also very um, enriching. So heads off, uh, I, I think that's, that sounds very impressive to me yeah. uh, and it takes a lot of self-discipline and also self-management, mm -hmm. uh, self-leadership also to set these boundaries I think it's, it's something I would struggle with I guess uh, you know because uh, who tells you now it's, it's really you know it has to that's it that's it it needs to be completed I need to go to bed because otherwise tomorrow is getting very challenging <laughs> so, so having that competency and also uh, this this resilience uh, also maybe the ability to say no mm -hmm. also to slow down instead of you know doing even more getting Im busier and busier uh, it's probably uh, one of the key um, competencies uh, that 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 you might need um, I don't believe it, uh, you know our business life is getting getting slower I, mm -hmm. I think it's I think it's getting even faster and even you know even more challenging and complex and uncertain and so on so i think we all need this kind of self-management abilities yeah i totally agree so now let's get to our top three category your top three skills that you need to succeed in your job or area of expertise uh, maybe let me start with my top three and then i'll ask you to uh, do your top three as well so yeah, i think sounds great um third on my list would be creativity we have already talked about it today but especially uh -huh. when working in marketing you gotta be very creative in terms of finding new and innovative solutions to certain challenges because also within the pharmaceuticals market it's very restricted and so we always gotta find new and innovative solutions to also not bore our customers of all of the same approaches all the time what about your top three? My top three would be uh, resilience. Uh -huh. We talked about it <laughs> earlier on and perseverance. I guess, you know, things don't always go uphill. Uh, and um, you also have to deal with setbacks. Uh, you take in some things take patience. You know, you mm -hmm. also work in marketing, building brands take in my case, uh, um, you know, a, a lot of time. It's a marathon, I, I used to say which includes uh, highs, but also low points. Um, and uh, you have to find a way to, to, to deal with that and stay constructive also in the, uh, when, uh, you know, when facing headwinds uh, is, is probably important. Always kind of getting back on track um, uh, and, and, um, and keep things going. Uh, uh, so um, all the things we've already discussed, I think, uh, are helping mm -hmm. uh, uh, on, 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 this, on this way. 
Yeah. Okay, then let's get on with the top two. Uh, from my side, that would be people skills and uh, communication. Mm -hmm. I mean, in the end, mm -hmm. buyer is a people business and we address directly people with uh, the products that um, we make. And so it's a lot about understanding your customers' needs and also in times of um, yeah, how, how we can help them, how we can add value to the challenges uh, they face and how we can help uh, overcome those challenges but on the other side we both work on the global level so we also have mm -hmm. internal um, yeah, levels to address for example also understanding the needs of our country colleagues how can we best support them in achieving their business goals so for me that would be people skills and with that in hand is a little bit communication I would also say what about you yeah super Yeah, super. I, I, I'm taking over yours. <laughs> uh, I think it's, it's, uh, it's definitely, so I would call it ins being able to inspire mm. people, to bring people on board. We talked about the different uh, perspectives, uh, bringing different perspectives together uh, is, uh, is, is important. Um, you, you mentioned the many stakeholders on different levels, you know, internally, ex externally, um, also when it comes to leadership, but also yeah. on your team level, your peers. Um, so uh, I think uh, it is important um, to, uh, yeah, to build a following, uh, to be able to also sell yourself, but also your topic. Um, nobody else will sell it for you, the idea or the presentation, the solution, whatever. You have to do that. And I think no AI probably can, uh, can replace that, that uh, probably other things. But uh, going in front of a group and bringing them on board, I think, is something uh, that is very yeah. human and people uh related so uh, i think that should stay with the human beings yeah especially in topics like brand building inspiring people is the, i think it's mm. one of the most important things and now drum roll uh, the f most <laughs> important skill in your area of expertise uh, for me that would be connecting the dots uh, in between very different um, topics you also said earlier on it's connecting people but it's also connecting dots so for myself it is um, somehow translating medical information into easy to grasp communication and also messaging but also when looking for example at uh, the performance or also launch dynamics kind of looking at market dynamics but also market research and translating that into a strategy I think this is the most important, um, yeah, maybe capability in the area where I am currently working at. Mm -hmm. Might be different um, for established products, might be different for non-pharmaceutical products, but for a product that has recently been launched, I think it's the most important thing. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I love that. Uh, so I think my, my top one is, uh, is, uh, is similar again. Mm -hmm. Uh, I would I would call it uh, results orientation mm -hmm. and um, the ability um, to implement. So implementation capabilities, I think, is important. On the one side, of course, also in your field, I guess it's strategic marketing. So you need to have a strategy. You need to build a vision. Um, you need to kind of uh, go through data and uh, ex uh, kind of um, uh, also extract the insights. But the question is, how can you translate that into concrete and tangible outcomes? And I think that's becoming more and more difficult because we talked about it already um, in our very distracted world. Uh, you know, you can be busy the whole day. But the question is, you know, did, did, did you do anything that really made an impact mm -hmm. or ha had the chance to move the needle? Uh, so I think sometimes we tend to mix up busyness with real productivity uh, so i would say in this very kind of vuca world um, uh, you know it's important to be able to uh, to also deliver outcomes because in the end it's the outcome it's not the ppt slide that counts yeah i totally agree i totally agree and that's also um i think sometimes in like agility trainings and so on You got to ask yourself, is this meeting really relevant? I think there's like, mm -hmm. I, I somehow heard it's like three questions. Is this meeting relevant? Do I need to be in that meeting? 
and what is the objective or the outcome of that meeting, the outcome, the output. And uh, at the beginning of each day, you can skip through your calendar and ask yourself these three questions. And maybe you can mm -hmm. decline up to, I'd say, 30 to 50 percent of all of the meetings. And that time mm -hmm. you can refocus to delivering outcomes. Um, and I think we have grown as an organization, but I think we can still further grow there. Um, yeah, in terms yeah, of that's. That's that's an awesome point, uh, uh, Clara. So uh, I think um, sometimes you know and you also don't always need a meeting for uh, <laughs> something. You know, some <laughs> some tasks can also be solved much easier and faster with other tools. And um, yeah, but you also have to dare, you know, not to be there. Sometimes uh, you know people are uncertain, uh, you know, fear of missing out, and so on. I think we need to overcome that. Um, if you are if you are busy with meetings all day, you know the work needs to be done, and these meetings need to be prepared and followed up uh, uh, too. So um, yeah, how how should that work? You know, everyone just have has twenty four four hours. <laughs> yeah, it should not all should not be all work. Yeah, and actually also only has up to eight hours to work. So we also should um, yeah. stick yeah. to yeah. that to get Absolutely. the rest that we need. Um, yeah. yeah. So Sven, it's been so nice and inspirational talking to you. Yeah. Now we yeah, only I could have... continue. <laughs> yeah. For, yeah, for another hour. <laughs> no. So much to discuss. Yeah, though. there yeah, is. I think we need to schedule yeah. a meeting. For we should. A yeah, we should. <laughs> <laughs> uh, now there's only the kickout question left, and that mm. uh, question would be: Why is growing at buyer important? Um, maybe let me start again um, with answering this question. I think for myself, growing at buyer is important to ensure we stay relevant, we stay up to date, and we can deliver the most value to patients possible to deliver on our vision, health for all, hunger for none. What about you? I couldn't have, uh, I think, uh, told it better. I would also say, uh, as an innovation company, investing so much in, in, in science de uh, development and, and research, it is just important that we keep innovating uh, because uh, lots of unmet needs. Uh, we have a very strong purpose, science for a better life, which is amazing. We have science as a superpower to solve the most uh, important and relevant uh, essential needs uh, health and nutrition under one roof so uh, i think this is a very strong purpose and the vision helps for all hunger for none couldn't be more inspiring yeah. so uh, this has so much ambition and also aspiration you know to always move forward uh, that that is really very motivating and also mm -hmm. important for us to deliver on all these uh, statements yeah and of course, with that comes also not only growing as an organization, but also as a person, right, within the organization. But I really think we need to um, end our conversation for now. But again, it's been really nice talking to you. Super. Thanks so much for the great conversation. And wishing you all the best for your launch and also for your studies. You uh, too. Clara. You too. <laughs> Have a good one. You too. Greetings to Berlin. Bye. Take Say care. Say hello. Bye.